good to go. Okay, Bill, you can um, you can turn your camera off if you want. Um, I, I think I'm going to be on just at the beginning, and then we're just going to go with the, with the screen. But I want to welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for attending tonight's uh, virtual public meeting to talk about uh, the commercial summer flounder uh, quota and how we can best uh, utilize it. Uh, my name is Daniel McCarran, and I'm the director here at the Division of Marine Fisheries. And we have a number of our Marine Fisheries Advisory Commission uh, members participating. We have Mike Pierdenach, we have Khalil Bogdan, Ray Kane, the chairman, um, and Bill Amaru. I don't know if I've missed anybody, but uh, that's pretty good representation. In addition, we have numerous uh, DMF staff, uh, uh, Jared Silver, who's gonna be giving uh, much of the presentation, Nicola Meserve, who is our representative to the uh, Fluke uh, uh, Summer Flounder Management Board at ASMFC and also participates on the Mid-Atlantic Council when those species are managed jointly. We also have Anna Webb and Story Reed who uh, crunch a lot of data for us. We have Matt Camisa who runs our trawl survey. We have Julia Kaplan who's our communication specialist and I don't know if I've missed anybody else. Yeah, Bob uh, Glenn too. Oh, and Bob Glenn, uh, who oversees uh, the uh, the assessment and survey program. So uh, Matt Camisa of the survey program would report to Bob. So thank you, uh, all the DMF staff for participating uh, at the end of your workday. I appreciate that too. So uh, tonight we're going to be looking for some feedback. Uh, we want you to plant some seeds with us, some ideas about uh, which of our rules we would prioritize amending in order to allow us to uh, better utilize the quota. Um, and you're gonna hear tonight that this quota is going up substantially next year. It's really uh, quite a uh, quite a, a, a unique uh, a situation in fisheries management. We don't usually have a lot of these kinds of meetings. Usually it's, it's in the negative and we need to, um, you know, argue over conservation measures. But tonight we're talking about uh, liberalizing the rules and we wanna do it in a way that makes the most sense. Uh, and so uh, we're gonna be talking uh, tonight about the, the way the fishery is managed now and which particular aspects of the fishery uh, could be in play for amendments. Uh, you all probably are, are aware that, um, that our fishery goes back to the 1990s uh, when the quotas were first enacted and we have a whole suite of, of, uh, of rules that have evolved over the past uh, nearly 30 years. We have uh, a 30-70 th uh, split on the quota, 30 for the so-called winter fishery, uh, uh, 70 for the inshore summertime fishery, summer fall. We have seasons, uh, specific seasons uh, where the, we reserve the fish for those, that 30-70. We have had fairly low trip limits over the last uh, decade or two um, or three. Um, we have days off during the summer months, uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, and then uh, in our most recent um, regulatory changes, we have uh, automatic increases in, during the fall months in those instances where we have a lot of fish left. So uh, we got a little smarter uh, with, with writing the regulations. So trip limits automatically go up uh, based on what kind of percentage of, uh, of quota we have remaining. And so we want to ask you for feedback on if we, if we uh, should should amend those and which, uh, because the, the quarter is going up substantially. Um, so uh, the schedule for all of this is um, we want to enact rules by next May. Uh, we want to take some proposals to the advisory commission uh, at their December 3rd, uh, 2021 meeting. Uh, we want to um, have public comment and, and or public hearing in a common period uh, during the winter of 2022. So. I guess most likely February, Jared, or uh, maybe maybe March. Um, I and then February, but you know. Yeah, and then get um, myself in the room with late winter. Right, and so then we would uh, we would give the commission our recommendations uh, no later than uh, than April, uh, hopefully in March, um, uh, for uh, for what we want to change. Um, so. I think, I think that kind of wraps it up for me. Uh, the agenda tonight will be uh, a general status of the, of the stock, uh, you know, quota utilization in recent years, you'll learn about that. Uh, 
uh, again, uh, how we're managing it, what our trends are in permitting, uh, catch effort, ex vessel value, et cetera, observations from the trawl survey. Um, then we're going to allow you all, as, as the industry members and, and, and any other participants, to ask technical questions about our presentation. And then we want uh, to give you a chance to register your recommendations for how we should change uh, some of the items moving forward. Uh, as far as the rules of the game tonight, um, we want to allow any interested parties the opportunity to comment. Uh, everybody's going to be muted during the presentation. At the conclusion of the presentation, uh, DMF will first accept clarifying questions. And then once all the questions are addressed, uh, we will invite uh, the public input. We've disabled the chat function. Uh, we found in some of these meetings that we have, we. We can see people chatting back and forth, having separate conversations, and it can be pretty distracting uh, for the staff to try to keep up with that. Uh, we, are, we ask you to uh, use the raise hand function. I hope you can, uh, the, you can manage that. Um, and, and Jared uh, Silver, who is the master, at, uh, along with Julia, at managing some of these uh, meetings will create a queue and, um, and, and recognize you in the order that your uh, hand was raised. We are going to record this meeting uh, and it'll be part of the public record and we'll post it to our YouTube channel. So uh, that's it for me. I'm gonna um, uh, now you know, turn it over uh, to Jared and um, with, with, with Story and, and, uh, and, and Anna Webb and, and Matt Kamisa, you know, Bob Glenn and Nicola um, uh, will all be contributing to this uh, if there are any uh, clarifying questions needed of, of, for Jared. So Jared, why don't you take it away? Okay, thank you, Dan. Thanks for the introduction there. Uh, I hope everyone's having a good evening. Um, I'm looking forward to some of the discussion later on when we get to hear from the industry on uh, how what is going on in this fishery and, and, and how we can uh, better manage the quota moving forward. Uh, but we wanted to just start off, give a little background information to help frame um, this discussion and, and show you some of what we're seeing in uh, both our landings data and in our trawl survey data. Um, so we'll start off just briefly with the status of the stock. Summer flounder is currently not overfished. It's at 86% of its biomass target. Uh, you can see on the um, uh, left hand graph there that there's been a recent uptick in the, uh, in the spawning stock biomass um, around 2018, 2019. Uh, coming down from several years of below average improvement from 2011 to 2017. Uh, currently not experiencing overfishing. It's at 81% of its overfishing threshold. That would be the uh, graph to your right. And uh, the, the stock assessment has also shown that there's a northward and eastward shift in spatial distribution of summer flounder over the last four decades, um, as uh, likely due to changes in open ocean temperature. Uh, next slide, Julia. So moving on to quota and quota utilization, as Dan indicated earlier, uh, we're looking at a substantial increase uh, in our quota this year. We're going from about 1.02 million pounds to about 1.4 million pounds. It's about 37%. Uh, this 22, 2022 quota increase is due to a 24% increase in the coastwide quota, as well as an increase quota share for the state of Massachusetts under the new al allocation approach. Um, this allocation approach uh, gives Massachusetts a larger share of the commercial quota um, when it's about more than 9 million pounds coastwide. So with that, our um, share went from about 6.82 to about 9%. Um, with this uh, recent 24% quota increase. Um, the second, this is the second consecutive year where we've had a substantial increase. We went from a quota of about 800,000 in 2020 to just over a million in 2021, which is about a 28% increase. Uh, the quota has steadily been increasing since the all time low of uh, 389,000 back in 2017. And for the past three years, 2019, 2020, and 2021, uh, we've underutilized the available quota to us. 
Um, and that quota range from between about 740,000 pounds to about to 1.02 million pounds. And our, our underutilization range from about uh, 66% this year, uh, 74% in 2019 and 88% in 2020. Uh, next slide, Julia. So this looks at that uh, five-year period throughout the um, throughout the entire year, which includes both the period one wintertime fishery and the period two summertime fishery. Uh, 2020 and 2021, we've substantially increased the period one uh, limits. We added January um, as a fishing month. We've increased the trip limits up to 2,000 pounds. Uh, to start the season uh, in 2021, and we went up um, mid-season in 2020. Um, and as you can see, they, they've increased their, their share of the, or their take of the quota, where in past years, they may have only taken about less than 100,000 pounds. They're now taking about two to 300,000 pounds. Um, the, uh, summer period has fluctuated, you know, we closed in 2017 and 2018 when the quota was taken the past few years with the quota increase. Uh, we have not taken the full quota and it has been underutilized. Next slide. So Dan covered a lot of this, but, you know, just to put it up on your screen, uh, this is the current management system. Uh, there's a 30-70 split between the period one and period two fishery. Um, the period one fishery occurs offshore. Limits are designed to manage the quota throughout the period and avoid an allocation. It's a thousand pound trip limit set by regulation, but we have adjusted that trip limit um, through the declaratory process to provide them with greater access to the quota uh, the last two years, given the substantial quota increases. Uh, the period two fisheries broken down into three sub seasons. You have the uh, the spring, April 23rd to June 9th season, where it's open seven days a week. It's effectively a bycatch fishery for the uh, squid trawlers. Then you go to the directed inshore fishery, June 10 to October 31. It's open Sunday through Thursday, uh, 400 pound limit for nets, 250 pound limit for hook and line gear. That's principally a directed inshore fishery, but there is a small offshore component that does land fish during that period as well. And then uh, the November 1 to December 31 season. And again, that, that opens up with a thousand pounds, but we have taken action to increase it to utilize the quota. And that's primarily an offshore fishery. Uh, notably, uh, next slide. So we have made some recent changes in management. Uh, as I said, we increased the trip limits uh, for the period one fishery. Um, moving here from 500 pounds to 1,000 pounds and opening up January as, a, as an open fishing month. And then through the de declaratory process, we've moved that 1,000 pound trip limit to a 2,000 pound trip limit to better utilize um, the quota. In 2020, uh, we opened it up to 2,000 pounds on February 23rd and the period one fishery landed 78% of its allocation. This past year, we opened it up at 2,000 pounds on January 1 when the fishery opened. They landed 85% of the allocation for 2022. We've proposed increasing that trip limit to 2,500 pounds on January 1, as the expected allocation is about 417,000 pounds. Additionally, we have a pilot program during that period. Uh, that pilot program allows vessels that are permitted in multiple states to possess multiple state landing limits when offloading. So if you're permitted in Rhode Island and Massachusetts, you could come in to say, New Bedford with both Massachusetts and Rhode Island's limit, offload Massachusetts limit, and then go on to Point Judith and offload Rhode Island's limit. Uh, during the period two fishery, we adjusted the regulations in 2020. We increased the trip limits from 300 pounds to 400 pounds for net fishermen and 200 pounds to 250 pounds for hook fishermen. We also added that November, December, November through December season with 1,000 pounds trip limit and no closed fishing days. Uh, we've adjusted the period two trip limits also by declaration to um, better utilize the quota. Uh, 
2019, we uh, increased the limits late in the season in November um, from 200 to 300 pounds for hook and line fishermen, and then um, eliminated uh, Friday as a closed fishing day. In uh, 2020, we increased the trip limits from 400 to 600 pounds for nets um, on August 23rd. Then it went up to 1,000 pounds for all gear on October 1 and eliminated closed fishing days. And then November 1 went up to 2,000 pounds for all gear. And then this past year, we changed the trip limit on September 26 to 800 pounds for all gear and eliminated closed fishing days at that time and then went up to 2,000 pounds on October 10. Uh, the pilot program is also a pilot program for trawlers. Uh, during the period two fishery that was established in 2019 and renewed for 2020 and 2021. And that allows for the landing of consecutive daily trip limits. So if you're fishing, as we've had reports of the fish are further east and, and um, off Nantucket, that if you're wanting to lay up overnight in Nantucket and fish two consecutive days, then you could tag the catch for one day, uh, go out fishing the next day, and come back to port uh, on the mainland with. Um, with two days limits um, and lawfully land them. Uh, next slide, Julia. So we looked at, we, we did some background and we looked at permitting and landing figures um, for this fishery. And, and you know, this is what we're seeing in terms of permitting trends. We, we do have a decrease in the overall number of permits issued uh, with permits being retired out of the system. Uh, that may have been driven in part by the fact that the uh, Fluke endorsement for non-trawlers was not transferable until 2021. Uh, now we do allow the transfer of the fluke endorsement for non-trawlers, um, which will allow rod and reel fishermen primarily to transfer their permits provided the fluke endorsement is active or one of any of the rod and reel permit endorsements they may be transferring such as sea bass or uh, to tog are active, we'll bundle them together. Uh, we're also seeing a fairly substantial decrease in the number of total active permits from 135 in 2017 to um, 103 in 2020. We don't have the full data yet for 2021, but that's a fairly substantial decrease in, in total activity. Uh, we also see that the average age of participants in this fishery is the age of 60. It's a slightly hotter, higher for those who participate in the rod and reel fishery and slightly lower for those in the summertime trawl fishery, but it, 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 that, that's the active age there. So it is an older fleet. Next slide. Uh, so here are some landing trends uh, for the summertime fishery. Uh, we, we focus primarily on the summertime fishery because uh, it appears as though the, the period one fishery uh, through a combination of trip limits can take what approximately what they're allocated. Uh, so to, the conversation today is, is I'd like to focus a lot more on the summertime fishery as there's several more variables. I think there's other factors affecting the performance of that fishery uh, where I think the uh, perhaps the solutions to increasing the uh, period one fishery performance is, is more straightforward. Um, so looking at these, um, we are seeing, you know, a decline in landings um, during that summertime inshore fishery. Um, and we have seen a little bump up in uh, landings coming from federal waters uh, over the past two years, bringing us back to where we were about a decade ago with their contribution to overall uh, landings, which is consistent with what we're hearing from some of the fleet that the uh, fish are further east um, off Nantucket, particularly the larger fish. Uh, next slide. So this is a view of commercial gear trends for the inshore summertime fishery. Um, so the um, blue is a uh, trawl, the uh, beige is hook and line. The, um, so we're seeing a, a decrease in landings across the board, but we're seeing a large decrease in landings um, in the uh, hook and line fishery, as well as a large decrease in trips in the hook and line fishery. And that's something that we're gonna bear out across a lot of this data is that there, there has been a substantial decrease in hook and line fishing um, 
And it is noteworthy that the trawl fishery occurs primarily within what we refer to as SRA 10, but what's commonly known as Nantucket Sow, while the rod and reel fishery is a strong driver in landings coming from uh, SRAs 13 and 14, which are Vineyard Sow and Buggered Sow. Um, Julia, sure, I lost the slideshow. Yeah, hang on. Uh, I think my computer is trying to install something hang on okay well i will go to mine then okay sorry about that folks bear with me for 30 seconds so i believe i was here so we're going to move on to the next slide uh so this looks at uh Landings by landings, trips, and active permit count by um, statistical reporting area again 10 Nantucket Sound, 13 Vineyard Sound, 14 Buzzards Bay. Uh, you know, we're seeing a decrease in landings across the board, but we're seeing a large decrease in landings in Vineyard Sound um, and um, trip count, decrease in trip count across the board, but a larger decrease in trip count in Vineyard Sound. And permit active permit count, you know, it stayed pretty steady with the fishery occurring in Nantucket Sound, but we've seen a decrease in activity in Vineyard Sound and Buzzards Bay. Um, so another way to look at this, we have frequency of summertime trips here. So uh, the trawl fishery, uh, you know, between 2015 and 2019. They were limited at 300 pounds. So during those years, you find most of the trawlers are going to be taking between 200 and 300 pounds. Um, then in 2020, when that limit was up to um, 400 pounds, you see most of the trawlers taking above 400 pounds. So that appears to us that the trawl fishery is achieving their limits um, when the fishery is open during the summertime period. Hook and line fishery, um, you know, it, it's a little more mixed. Uh, they're not, uh, while well, the trip one was increased to 250 in 2020, we're not seeing a lot of landings coming in at that level in that year. You know, it, it appears most of the frequency of trips um, landing, um, landings are coming in at about zero to 100 across the years and some coming in between 100 and 200. So that fishery isn't necessarily achieving their trip limit on a trip to trip basis. So this is looking at uh, landings trends by market category. So I, I have conversations with a lot of you I've had over the past year or two, and I'm hearing about the preponderance of small fish and the sound and the lack of large fish in the sound. And, uh, you know, we're seeing that a uh, uh, medium, the medium grade makes up most of the landings year to year, and that stayed pretty stable for the summertime fishery. And uh, so we're as a product of market size by landings, we're not seeing that trend as pronounced um, in the landings data. You know, it appears most of, you know, 60 plus percent across the board for the past six years, seven years is coming in as medium grade. You know, you got about 20% coming in as large and about 15% coming in as jumbos. And that's, that's fairly stable. Um, and then these are just kind of parsed by price. You know, uh, media, medium fish make up the majority of landing. So they make up a majority of the, of the total X vessel value of the fishery. And the price has stayed pretty, pretty um, stable. Uh, between three uh, three dollars and fifty and just over five bucks a pound over the past six years, and um, you know the um, Joe um, the jumbos in the large grade are, are are clearly worth more than the mediums. And I don't think I need to tell the fleet that. Um, so we we looked at the trawl survey data too, um, and it's you know th this is interesting. Our our both our spring and our fall trawl surveys are seeing an increase in abundance and biomass in summer flounder. This is for all regions throughout the state, uh, but uh, 
a majority of the catch of summer flounder occurs south and west of Cape Cod. Um, so the, 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 this would remain true for the sounds and buzzards bay. So we're seeing an increase in both biomass and abundance in both the spring, and this is the fall trawl survey. But what is interesting and what does match a lot of what I've been hearing from you folks is while we have had that giant increase in abundance, we're seeing that mostly play out in uh, market grade of mediums, while there has been a marked decrease in the abundance of large and jumbo fish uh, caught in our spring trawl survey, which occurs at uh, the beginning of May. So this is indicative of what you'd start to see in the sounds at the beginning of the June directed inshore fishery. Um, so, you know, this is matching, you know, while we're not maybe seeing in the landings data because maybe the, some of that's being influenced by you guys going further east um, to, to catch the fish or more fish coming in, above hop and fish coming in from offshore uh, where the larger fish are. But we are seeing that in our trawl survey that there's, um, you know, more small fish in the inshore population um, and less large and jumbo grade fish. And the, and the same goes for the fall trawl survey. Um, but this is more, oh, it's more pronounced in the spring and given the timing of the fall trawl survey, which is September, um, you know, the fish might be moving offshore by that point. So it might not be as reliable as, um, you know, as a metric as the uh, spring survey. So, you know, the first thing we want to do for you guys is kind of hear your thoughts on how this fishery is performing, your concerns about, about what's going on. And then, you know, to frame the discussion for uh, options moving forward, you know, there, there are several tools in the toolbox. We can look at period, period quota allocation splits, you know, should, um, is, is it reasonable to increase um, the period one allocation, particularly given that we're going to have a 1.4 million pound quota, um, overall trip limit increases by period, um, or by, by season, um, you know, what are the optimal trip limits for that summertime fishery? Um, is there a date certain in the fall or the late summer where those trip limits should be considered to be increased uh, based on certain metrics of performance, i.e., you know, if 25% of the quota remains on August 15th, should we automatically adjust upward those trip limits by a certain amount? Um, Open fishing days, you know, we've constrained the, the, the fishery to not fish on Fridays and Saturday, Saturdays during the um, summer um, due to uh, concerns both by dealers about the marketability of fish landed on the weekends and um, by recreational fishermen citing user group conflicts. But is that something we should reconsider? Uh, permitting and transferability, I mean, right now we, uh, it is a limited entry permit. Uh, the, the permit for, for, for trawlers or net fishermen has been transferable provided it's actively fished or being transferred with an actively fished cap or with a federal fluke permit. Correct me if I'm wrong, story. Um, and just this past year, we've made it transferable for the rod and reel fishery. Um, and that is either if that's actively fished, meaning more than one pound sold in four out of the five past five years, it could be transferred as a single endorsement or it could be bundled with the two other limited entry permanent uh, run of real permanent endorsements, CBAS and TATOG. And if one of those permits is actively fished, then the other two could be transferred. So there are other things in permitting that we may want to consider uh, for this fishery. So you know, I'm really looking forward to, to hearing from, from the fleet on this. You know, I talked to a lot of you guys informally throughout the season. Uh, but I, I think it'd be great to, to hear your opinions on this and to see where we can go. Because as Dan did point out at the beginning of this, it's not often that we have a, um, the good news of this type of substantial quota increase. Usually when we're having these types of meetings, it's trying to determine how to manage a smaller quota. Um, we have the opportunity here to manage a larger quota and I'd be you know, really interested to hear from all of you on, on how we should best do that. So uh, Dan, I got you with your hand raised, so why don't you jump up and... Uh... Yeah, thanks, Jared. I just wanted to add one more thought to the, to, to, the, to the preface here for this discussion, and that is 
and, and, and also for our, uh, some of our commission members, to, uh, just as a point of fact, there are no federal trip limits for summer flounder. And it's, this is an obvious point, but I just wanna remind everybody about that. So uh, Massachusetts is given the authority to manage its share of the overall national quota. And so when we have low trip limits, which is what we've had you know, for the summertime, it does encourage, uh, or I should say it, does, it discourages traveling far afield. So you know, it's most profitable to be able to catch that fish close to home because they're, you know, the, the, the catch isn't worth that much at a very low trip limit of three or 400 pounds. And so, um, you know, to take advantage of, of some of these uh, big increases, um, you know, it might make sense to be liberalizing the, that, that trip limit during the summer so that fishing can go further afield, you know, into, into even the federal zone, because with only a three or 400 pound trip limit, um, it does, I think it kind of forces most boats to fish very close to home. So that's something to consider um, as we try to figure out ways to, to utilize this quota. We know that there are some boats from out of state that would fish like south of the islands, but then you know, take, that, take those fish home where they might have a higher trip limit in their home state. So uh, I just wanted to make that comment. Thanks, Jared. So I'm the meeting moderator, I suppose. So I'm going to turn this now over to, to, to the industry. Um, so, you know, use the raise hand function. I mean, if we can parse this between questions about the presentation um, and, and then some discussion or just head right into discussion, I, I'm fine with that. Um, so I'd like to hear from you. So if you have any questions, comments, ideas, anything, raise your hand and uh, let's let's hear it. Jonathan Joel, you're, you're recognized. You gotta unmute yourself. There you go. I just unmuted. Can you hear me now? I can. Go right ahead. Okay. okay. Well, I'm I'm part of the rod and reel fleet. Um, if you could call us that at this point, we're all pretty long in the tooth. Um, and thank you for allowing us to uh, transfer our permits these days. Um, I think that gives us all a little bit of hope that there will be a rod and reel fleet um, in the future. We, we had kind of an interesting phenomena um, with the rod and reel guys. Is I, I personally had one of the best year that I've had since probably 2008 um, with fish caught locally. Uh, there were no other guys around, which at the time seemed kind of nice. Um, and then later in the season, uh, we moved up towards Chatham um, and, and the fish had moved in there. Um, it, being, being in the small boats, it, it would be good for us it, it, if we had seven days available fishing time only because it's pretty rare that we get weather for five days. Um, and then Due to the age of the uh, the participants in the rod and reel, you know, we we very rarely can do three three days in a row, um, which you know might sound funny, but it's just the way it is. Um, if there was a way to to maybe open that up for us for seven, um, that would help us better utilize. The, the fishery. Um, the other thing that that might you know that being having a small bag limit, you know, I was all excited to get the two fifty and 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 make it some days. You know, it was a stretch. Um, uh, I I think we could, you know, I could envision myself having help if, if I had a three hundred pound bag limit. Um, as versus being solo, because my my only worry about the uh, increases is that um, with the increases over the last two years, I've seen decreases in prices. And in the fall, I stopped fishing because the price did fall so much um, once it was opened up. So that's it for me. Thank you. 
Appreciate the comments. Thank you. And Barrett, you're recognized. Okay. Well, I, I, there's a lot to there's a lot to chew over here, but uh, I, I I think I'll just start it off and then uh, let everyone else chime in. But I think I think what you've had in the in the fluke fishery in the summer fluke fishery is a successfully managed small boat fishery. And I think any changes that then change that small bow fishery to a larger bow fishery is doing a disservice to the small boats, the, the smaller draggers um, in, in the Commonwealth. So, um, I, and I think, I think what DMF really should be asking right now, um, and this is something I saw in the last three years, is why? Why are we not catching the fish? Why are we not, why are, why do you have such small landings when we used to be able to, that this used to be a fishery that would end in August, um, even with 700,000 pounds. So um, I don't know, I think, I think we really, personally, I believe the, uh, the offshore wind survey boats have driven them off seasonal uh, migration routes. Um, we have a problem with weed in the sounds. So I, I would like some of the effort at Division of Marine Fisheries to be uh, channeled towards figuring out why we aren't catching the fish we used to catch. And I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you, Ed. Come on, folks, don't be shy. I know a lot of you. I know a lot of you have thoughts on this, Paul. Paul and Hanks, where'd you go? Paul, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Uh, Jared. Yep. I'm. Uh, my. My. I know. I've talked to you in the summers about uh, what I thought the fishery needs the most, and I. I. Um. I don't have a big boat. I fish, it's just a 36 foot boat that I fish alone. And my biggest complaint all the time is when they do raise the quotas, it's, it's not so much the quota, it's the days off. The days off have been killing me over the years. Like I probably average three days a week. It's just because of it's breezy a lot and it's just gets dangerous. So we miss, we don't, I don't know if I missed I think I maybe two times this whole summer I was able to fish five days. It would I think it averaged to be three days a week, and uh, my that's my biggest gripe is in so many times those Friday and Saturdays were the good days. It just seemed you know, and I just feel like we don't need those days off. I know years ago when we first asked for days off to slow the fishery down, it's all different now. There's there's not half the boats left, and. Um, that that's what I would recommend to, to we're not even going to come close to catching a million pounds of fish at five days a week. Uh, I mean, I liked, I, I thought 400 pounds was a, a good quota for a daily, you know, if I catch 400 pounds, I'm happy. But uh, if you could leave it at that, um, I, uh, I just feel as though uh, there's just so less boats fishing and uh, the, everything is getting more expensive for to tie up. It's just that you see less and less boats. And um, I would like to, that was my recommendation. Um, I, don't know, I just uh, wrote down a few things as far as the uh, increase. In, you don't want to talk about horseshoe crabs, right? <laughs> just fluke. If, I mean, it's a mixed trawl fishery, Paul. So, if you have ideas on horseshoe crabs, well, that's another thing. Is you know, I, I, honestly, truthfully, I I see more horseshoe crabs than I've ever had in the past. And I know we were it, we're they had us off at seventy five, and I'd like to see that maybe like two hundred crabs. Um, you know, what happened is the medical people were begging from this year, and, and we were 
you know, me and a lot of my friends that are left, we were catching 75 and they were begging for them. And then towards the end, they kind of lost interest. They said they lost their help and they went back to school. And uh, so I, I, it just seems like we've, we've set it up. And I, I know we were all far as far as slowing down the quota, but we, I'd like to see it flip-flopped, you know, start out at a large amount. And, and then if we're catching too many, cut it back. We come late September, October, it, it gets pretty hard to, 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 to get out down there. And, um, you know, it's just been a long summer and I'd like to just catch them in the summer months when they're there. And that um, that's what I'm hoping to, to get by. You know, it's just, we, and I'm not, I'm not even looking to fish seven days a week. I'd like to just get to the five you know, that's why I say open it up to seven and I can pick my days when it blows 30, I can stay home, you know, but anyhow, that, that's my, um, my, my opinion. Hey, Paul, I, this is, this is Dan. Can I ask a question? Sure. Did you take advantage of that uh, pilot program so you I, could take uh, two, uh, two sets of fish back to back? We did, Dan, and that worked out great. When we go to Nantucket, you know, mm -hmm. it makes a big difference. We don't have to steam back when it's blowing in the afternoon Southwest. Yeah. And that's, that's a definite, you know, I, that was a good program and, and it wasn't abused. You know, it's, it's, right. there's only a few guys left. I, there was one boat when I went to Nantucket, we used to go in there and be 15 boats tied up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that pilot program definitely helps us. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank thanks, you. Paul. Okay. Sure thanks. Willie Hatch, you can unmute yourself. Hi guys, can you hear me? I can, Willie, how you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. A um, Couple of questions, couple of comments. Um, with this quota increase, is the recreational quota going up as well? Nick? Excuse me? It uh, is. It, hi, Willie, uh, it is hi. the, the the recreational quota is also going up. Um, the limits for next year have not been determined yet. Um, the monitoring committee has had a call though, and it, you know, it looks like there's a potential for some um, liberalization of the recreational limits, but that's not set in stone yet. Okay, great. I know it's about commercial. I was just wondering. Um, I have just a few observations. Um, I fished Vineyard Sound for, for a long time, and we've seen that inshore hook fishery pretty much disappear <laughs> um, over the past probably 10 years. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's hotter water, less bait, less fish. I don't know, but Buzzards Bay and Vineyard Sounds really, you know, there used to be 200 boats you know, drifting on Lucas Shoal during an open commercial day. And that's that's pretty much been whittled down to five or six guys drifting in middle ground. Um, why that is, I don't know. Um, but it's not good. Maybe the stock's not doing as good as everybody thinks. Um, if we're not catching the quota, what's what's really the point of the increase? Um, you know, that's, that's my question. Um, but I would support going to seven days a week just to allow the guys to get in the days. I know the weather this year, especially this fall, has been horrendous. So that's probably cut down on the amount of fishing days as well for the guys. So I think that pilot program worked out great with the guys fishing on Nantucket for multiple days. Um, I would say to keep that going. Um, as far as an increase in quota goes, um, to try and achieve the quota, you might end up driving the price down. Uh, I think like John said, um, so you're just killing more fish for the same price. Um, those are just my observations and ideas, I guess. So thank you very much. Thanks, Willie. You're welcome. Phil Misha. You can unmute yourself. How you doing, Phil? You hearing me fine? I can't hear you. Excellent. Yeah, I, I wanted to um, talk about a few points of this. Um, 
I'd like the uh, director to have the discretion to make adjustments in season as he sees uh, necessary to um, reach the goals that we need. Uh, so that's one of them. Um, the period two fishery, fluke fishery that starts April 23rd, typically we're allowed 100 pounds of fluke. I'd like them to, the commission to consider going to 200 pounds at that point, because the, if we are able to catch over 100, they're, they're worth a lot more money than they are later in the season. Um, <clears throat> I think the 400 pounds worked out pretty well. Um, I, I think when I look at the fleet, we don't have resilience within the drag of fleet anymore um, or in a lot of, a lot of the different uh, fisheries. Um, and there's a lot that's undermined that. Um, but, but when you look at the boats in Nantucket Vineyard Sound that are fluke fishing, there's only a few drag is left. Um, I'd like to see the possession limit up, move from three to 400 pound, that works, but I'd like it to be in small increments I think we need to really um, try to maintain the small day boat fishery that we have traditionally had. Um, boats will go where the money's being made. There's not enough money. A few more dollars will bring in a few more boats, but if we increase their stock to three, $4,000 or something like that, it's gonna be like the general category scallop fishery that went from 40 footers to now most of them are 70 foot. We, we don't wanna see that happen. Um, so I'd like to see small increases, not big ones. Um, something that um, troubles me is um, I did get my possession limit nearly every day I fished, but um, what's troublesome is when you're trying to hit your mark of three or 400 pounds and, and you haul back and you got that extra bushel of fish, uh, we try to get them over, but they don't, a lot of them don't make it over the extra. They don't make it over and swim away and we catch them the next day. They, they go over dead. And what I would like to do is perhaps, like I, I looked into section 6.22 um, and it's referring to fluke restrictions, uh, vessel limits and landings. I, I'd like to see a landing limit of say 400 pounds, but allow us a possession limit of 600 and that additional, whether it's 50, 100, up to 200, if you're comfortable with that, that gets applied to the next fishing day. So, you know, what did I throw over uh, last season? 10, 20, 30% of the catch is overage that I wasn't able to catch the next day. Um, would have been much more efficient and smarter and healthier for the fishery to have been able to retain it and land them the following day. Um, as far as enforcement goes, there's not that many more there's not that many boats that they need to really track. I suggest perhaps we can send in an email um, to the state or a text saying um, carrying 75 pounds over, um, you know, landing in Hyannis at 3 p.m. Uh, you know, so, something like that, um, I think would be a, a good way to go. Um, and then uh, the last part is the integrity. Oh, another piece is, um, we have a six and a half inch uh, square mesh. Rhode Island has a six inch with a 14 inch fish. Um, our caught ends, we buy them. They're six and three quarter. They go to six and a half. They shrink up to six and a quarter. When, when they start getting below the six and a half, we gotta, we gotta buy a new one at a thousand to 1200 bucks. Um, perhaps in Nantucket Vineyard Sound, allow, allow us to go, allow that caught end to, to go down to six inch. Um, allow us to keep the cut ends we currently have and not have to replace them annually. Um, that would help out. And that six and a quarter, um, the, the summer flounder doesn't have the bone structure of a winter flounder. It doesn't have that bone in the stomach that holds it. And there's strong swimmers that pop and throw. Um, so I had more to say, but I've been on too long. So please consider those thoughts. Thank you. Well, I, I, I'm going to out you as one of the guys I, I, I frequently speak with during the season. I know you and I were in touch in uh, August or so about increasing that limit come, uh, you know, for, for, for the September period. But the way it worked with the commission and, and, and the declaration process works, we weren't able to get any changes into 
effect until I, the very end of September. Um, you know, looking back on that, I think, you know, I, I think we perhaps lost an opportunity to, to, to land more fish had, had that process not, if the process was not so prolonged. And one of the things that Dan has been speaking about at recent commission meetings is rather than relying on the, the, the director's discretion to adjust these things in season, to create kind of date certain performance matrix um, where, where they're baked into the regulation so that you know that if we're at 40% of the quota on September 1, you know, certain changes are gonna be made, you know, whether it's eliminating fishing days or increasing the trip limit or something like that. Um, could, you, could you speak to um, you know, what a good date certain would be or, or, or what good fall trip limits would be? Well, it, it, the trouble I have with that is every September, October, it blows a gale. And to safely fish, you're only going to get out two or three days a week. Um, hopefully, it's not a day we can't fish. But, um, you, you know, I, I, I want to maintain the character of the fleet. And, and try to draw a few of these guys back that have that that have um, left. It, but um, I think if the director is able to see who we're getting and 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 you know I, I'm seeing big boats out of New Bedford and Point Judith coming in and, and, and grinding out a day in a piece and leaving with a a, a double limit and, and stuff like that. You know. If, if he goes up too much, it, it's gonna bring in the wrong kind of effort. I I'd like to just maintain the traditional and then perhaps in only 100 pound increments. Um, the problem that we have is, you know, when a few boat, boats swipe a tow, it needs to rest overnight. Um, if you're too aggressive on the tow, there's gonna be half as much the next day and very little the following. Um, so we, it's really gotta be closely I, I don't know about structuring it with those in season, you know, that would be fine, but um, I, I think we still got to have some fine tuning available. Hey, Phil, this is Dan. I have a question for you. Uh, you made a comment about um, increasing that early uh, spring limit from 100 to 200. Just, just so you know, uh, we look at that fishery um, as really, uh, the spring as really two fleets. One is the fleet that is squid fishing with small mesh and for which we, we allow the 100 pound limit. And then uh, the, the fleet that puts on the larger mesh should probably be allowed to have more, more fluke. I guess the question that Jared and I have been uh, pondering is, should we allow the boats that might put on the larger mesh, say in around June 1st, to um, fluke early uh, because we are proposing as a final rule, uh, we're gonna be going to public hearing over, over this winter to go to a, uh, an amended squid uh, end date of June uh, 15th or 16th. 15th. Uh, 15th. 15th will be the last day. Yeah, so we're, we're planning on, on adding another week to, the, to that uh, squid fishery with a hard stop without Director's discretion um, to, uh, to to extend it, um, and and so what we're wondering is, would you or others uh, uh, occasionally put on the big mesh earlier than the end of the squid fishery, and just go? Like right now, the squid fishery ends June 9th, and presumably everybody then puts on the fluke mesh, the big mesh, and they they go fluking. Uh, should we allow some overlap in time as long as the boats that are that are targeting the larger amounts of fluke are using the appropriate mesh. Oh, I, I see. So in order to have in, in, in excess of 100, you'd have to have a larger mesh aboard? Yeah, right, because right now we're allowing 100 pounds as basically squid squid uh, trawling bycatch. Uh, I think that's even in the plan, right, Nick? Correct. Yeah, so the interstate or the federal plan kind of forces us to do that, but um, but we could allow an earlier opening of fluke, and if and if guys didn't want to go squidding, they could go fluking. I, I think that I think that would be helpful. Um, 
I, you know, that, that's one piece of it. I, I, I've got ideas about building the resilience of the Draga fleet. Uh, we've taken a lot of hits over the years in some of the different fisheries, and that, that's why we don't have a strong fleet, um, a, a strong fluke fleet anymore. Um, that would be a little something to help out. Um, you know, the guys that don't want to travel three hours down in Nantucket might pick up some crab and some fluke, and it, it may work. I think fluke last spring was five bucks a pound starting off. Yeah, so so in that case, Jared, uh, we would uh, be amending uh, or would be getting rid of the opening day. We would just go to like, uh, you know, I guess on April 23rd, we could just go to the, the full trip limit and just have uh, make sure that boats are using the appropriate mesh. Yeah, there'd have to be something where you put in, possess more than a nominal amount of squid to be considered a large mesh trip. And anything above that possession limit of squid we'd presume it would be caught with small mesh and therefore you'd be limited to 100 pounds. Yeah, or I don't know if you would be want... catching. I don't, I don't know if guys could take the, the net off the the small mesh net off the boat. Or and just, yeah, just... I, would, I think that's a discussion worthy of having worth having with law enforcement is how to make that enforceable. Yeah, OK. Anyway, my, that's one thought that we had, Phil. Yeah, my my my. my um... You know, you know what's really hurt us over the years is the flexibility that we used to have, and and we're losing uh, that flexibility. And and I'm looking at having a, a squid net on the boat, and then having the large mesh on the boat, mm -hmm. and and being able to, you know, it's blowing hard northwest. Well, let let's stay up in the north part of the sound, and 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 uh, you know, fish the larger mesh, and then the next day travel down to Nantucket. And um, yeah. you're losing flexibility. If you got to take a net off, that's that, that's a big okay. project, that, you know, and I, I was just thinking that in, in the spring, those first cup, you know, that 200 pound might, would, would be helpful. A couple hundred pounds of fluke and a few crab and a few conch uh, makes a day's pay for a guy. Um, well, we but, thought we'd give you more flexibility with our proposal because you could go fluking anytime you wanted uh, in the spring. You just have to have the, uh, be using the right mesh. But Jerry's yeah. idea is you use the, the presence of, of squid as uh, you know, you can't possess squid if you've got if you've got the uh, larger. You can't have more than a hundred pounds of flounder if you have any squid. Okay, okay, um, but you can still have a squid net aboard for the next day. If, if yeah. that's what you're thinking, you know, yeah, we're I here am. to listen. Yeah, I, I am. I'm just trying to, you know, that's what's killed us over the years of losing that flexibility. You know, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, yeah. uh, the hard stand on things. So that that would that would work. Okay. My, that's just my opinion that the, there's a, several other guys, you know, that in the same boat as me. All right. Thank you. Appreciate the comments, Phil. Jared Averbeck, you're recognized. Jared, you got to unmute yourself. Hey, sorry about that. Um, Hey everybody! Thank you. Um, I don't. I don't. I, I guess I don't really have any unique thoughts, but I wanted to um, second some thoughts. I I definitely think if there's a way to give Dan or somebody more discretion, I think it's a small enough group of people who who participate in this. And you know, 2021, it's really easy to share information. Um, I would love to see just Dan or Story or somebody uh, at the DMF have more discretion to change things faster because, you know, you, you can do all the math you want, but we can't predict who's going to be involved in the fishery uh, in the summer. I think that's, you know, a, a key variable to all the math when we're trying to predict stuff. Um, I, I really agree with Phil on the ability to just have an overage, you know, whether however we sort of do that with enforcement i think you know pretending that we catch you know these exact round numbers is is foolish it's not good for the fishery it's just you know for a lot of reasons that makes sense and i think there's just there's ways to to address realities without just burying our heads in the sand um uh, I also love the idea of finding ways to have it overlap with the squid season, sort of having a start and stop seems, again, seems like another thing where we're just kind of doing it because it's a bit complicated to figure out the enforcement. But I think 
you know, if people just put our heads together, we can come up with a solution there. And my final comment is just that um, the, the sentiment is clearly to keep this, this sort of traditional small boat fishery in the summer. And I'm all for that. But I just think that means, you know, move it, you know, we should figure out what the total number um, is. And I, I just think we have an obligation as a state to harvest our entire quota and, you know, that doesn't mean we have to up the limits in the summer, but it should certainly mean we should catch that fish at another time of year. Uh, so those are all my thoughts. Thank you very much. Hey, Jared, yeah. could I, could I keep you on for a sec? So yeah. um, you may be the only deal on, on the call here, but I'd like to ask you about the days off. Um, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of the input for having no fishing days also came from dealers because I think your company and others didn't couldn't ship uh, should couldn't ship fish on Fridays I guess or Saturdays and so that also fit into the to the uh, the days off strategy but in past years we've allowed this this um, allowance to possess two limits which means that if a, a boat wanted to go out on one of the days that a dealer didn't want to take fish they could hold the fish for the second day and then deliver it to you. So my question to you is, we have two no fishing days a week now. From a dealer perspective, um, would you like us to keep one or can we, can we have zero uh, no fishing days? I mean, what's your perspective as a dealer on that? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I'd have to put a little more thought into it. I know that my my thoughts have definitely changed from years ago when I, I know that I was sort of like, and, and I think Tori would have, was saying the same thing where, you know, the shipping days mattered and, and there was sort of, there were just more boats in the fishery. So the labor was a bigger issue, right? Like we kind of needed days off. It's, I'd have to think about what it's, de we definitely don't need two days off. I'd have to put a little thought into whether it's one or none, but, um, I'm, I'm very in favor of this two possession limit thing. You know, fluke hold up really well. That's why, you know, they trade higher than blackbacks and yellowtail flounder. Um, and, and all these fishermen participate in the fishery, you know, or know what they're doing and take really good care of their fish. So um, there, there's not a rush to market on these fish. If anything, it's a challenge with labor, just trying to have drivers on the docks or, you know, meeting the needs of the fishermen seven days a week. But um, I would lean towards um, the two day possession limits. Great. And we probably don't need any days off from uh, the perspective of a dealer. Okay. Yeah. So give it some more thought, get back to us. I think that's an important yeah. uh, part of the discussion. I, I'm glad you brought it up. And I definitely pushed the other way years ago, but that that's changed. So just to be clear. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Nate Davis, you can unmute yourself and give us your thoughts. Unmute. All right, here I am. Can you hear me? I got you, Nate. All right. Well. Nice to hear a lot of the productive talk tonight. You know, we're, we're a small group that all gets along. Usually, you know, talks to each other, you know, communicates with each other well. And I think we all share the same ideas. I think it sounds pretty mutual. We want to work every day of the week when the season's open. I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's a good idea to maybe even open the season earlier, like Bill was saying. That sounds good. Um, you know, maybe be a little more liberal with the limit. I think these are all good ideas. Uh, you know, I just want to make sure that the fishery stays the same percentage, you know, like traditionally, like, all right, the summer fish, fishery uh, traditionally harvests this much, the winter fishery traditionally harvests this much. Uh, I want to see things stay the same. I, you know, we're, we're kind of a less is more type of fishery where we know, you know, we don't want to work harder for the same amount of money. Um, a lot of us go out by ourselves. Uh, Echo on a lot of Ed and Bill's thoughts. Paul, oh, 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 you know, I think we all have good ideas. I think we, 
I think uh, you know we're on the right track here with the discussion. Uh, I hope that uh, a lot of these ideas can come to fruition. Ready to get you, all Nate. that. Ed Barrett? Yeah, um, I just wanted to continue on the days off discussion. Um, it, you know, back in the day, uh, uh, I can remember this being a seven day a week fishery. And, um, but I think again, uh, as uh, someone was saying how, you know, you would have 15 boats in Nantucket, you would have, you had, you had a, a lot of boats catching fluke very quickly. And I think it was Randy Moniz who actually was the one, um, and, and it shortened the season and it, and it drove daily prices down. I think Randy Moniz was actually the one who put it as a, into as a petition to go to five days. And I think that worked. And I think that worked for a while um, as there were, as the ability to catch a daily limit was, was readily there. I think things have completely changed. So, um, as Paul and, you know, and, and Nate and Phil were all saying, I mean, you don't, you don't get the five days in um, at, at 300 pounds every day. Um, and um, so I think the ability to have that seven days, first of all, you have, a, you have less of a fleet. You're not going to be overloading the market, I guess is the point I'm trying to make. Uh, if you go to seven days, I don't, you know, I, I, I think you'd still be lucky to get four or five days in out of the seven days. And um, th there's one other thing, um, you know, one reason we have less of a fleet is, is because of the cost of tie up. Import infrastructure has become a huge problem. Uh, I know of a, a lot of people who decided not to tie up in Hyannis because they were going to be charged $17,000 up front, up front. Um, and even at the uh, Ocean Street Dock, um, you know, you're tying up those two days, you're tied up and you're paying a, a daily, you're paying, uh, you know, for those days that you're tied up. So, um, you know, it's, it's one part of why it, it's, a, it's an issue. It's, it's a social and economic issue as to why the summer fleet is not performing as it, as it used to. So, um, so I think that ties in with the seven days. I think if you, if you have that ability, um, maybe things become a little bit more affordable, maybe, uh, maybe tie up, um, you know, doesn't become such an issue. It, you know, we've lost tie up in Nantucket too. Uh, Nantucket has decided because, you know, there aren't as many boats tying up there that that front dock is now uh, disembarks uh, people on a sailboat uh, charter every day, uh, the links. Uh, and so there's some issues there that aren't, that aren't biological. Um, but I think, you know, um, I think the days off, um, it, it needs to be changed. Thanks. Thank you. Ed. Paul. Paul, oh, you're going to unmute yourself. There you go. Okay, Jared, I didn't, this is the first time actually doing one of these Zoom meetings and I didn't realize that I had a hand on there, but everybody was making good points and uh, I'm all for what I'm hearing. I'm not seeing any further hands, so we're, unless we have, so. All right, Nate. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to like, you know, get to the root of the problem here and like why we're not seeing as many fish in the sound as well. And uh, I, I do think that, you know, some of the survey and the seismic, you know, activity of the research that's been going on, whether it's through Woods Hole or Vineyard Wind or whoever, I think is definitely disturbing our migratory patterns. And in the years I've done it, I've seen it go from, you know, really really easy good fishing when there was a relatively low quota and low survey as opposed to uh becoming a little more difficult with you know offshore numbers you know saying the contrary so, so 
what what is causing the same page on most of the things and most of the discussions when it comes to limits about how to further buddy you know so we can overcome the financial obstacles of dockage and everything else and uh why why can't the fish come in here like they used to and in uh in yeah, just, Nate, uh, we're already you know, picking up about half of what you're saying because the you're bottom time has increased, there's no doubt, overall. It seems like there's a lot of fish outside. So. All right, well, I don't know. Hopefully you heard the meat of it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Paul, did you mean to raise your hand again? Uh, I'm all set, Jared. No. All right. Good enough. So, Jared, I, I think we've presented a lot of good information. Um, you know, we yeah, can. I got, I got Dominic. So, you want to okay, hear from Dominic? Okay, Yep. Dominic? Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to just uh, say my support for a lot of the ideas that were presented tonight, which were kind of keeping the daily limit low for the small boats, four to 500 pounds. Uh, maybe increasing the fishing days and uh, increasing the season. So that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Dominic. All right, Dan. So, I'm gonna yeah, I was going to say we've we've given a lot of good information, a lot of technical information that if folks want to digest on their own schedule, they could um, uh, obtain that from you. Or should we put it up on a website? Have everyone who signed up for this um, webinar's email. Mm -hmm. So uh, tomorrow morning. I will be sending them this presentation so right. they can have it and mull it over um, as we move through this process. And if they have any thoughts as we move, as we put together that draft proposal or that, uh, or, or during the public hearing process, you know, I encourage folks just reach out to me and I'd be happy to, you know. Yep. I think we comments. got some really good feedback tonight. And, I agree. Um, and then but there's many iterations for folks to weigh in. So, you know, we're going to devise a, a, a memo or recommendation to the commission for what will go to public hearing. Then we'll have the public hearing so fishermen could weigh in at that time as well. So there's a chance to weigh in uh, like now or the next few days. Then they could weigh in when this goes to public hearing. And so, yeah. uh, but I think this has been a really uh, fruitful discussion. All right. And with that, uh, I think we're going to conclude and uh... Everyone enjoy the Pats game and some dinner, huh? Did Paul put up his hand again? I, I, I don't think it's intentional. Okay. All right. Well, All good right. job, Paul. <laughs> we appreciate your input. I know it's your first Zoom call. So thank you very much. And thanks, everybody. Well done. Thank you.